All righty, it's nine o'clock. All right. Well, kind of balanced screens and screens. Okay. okay. So my name's Tim Rudd. I'm the finance chair, and this is the budget hearing for the Bureau of the Treasury. Um, other counselor, can the counselors who are online just say hello? Like, Council Councilor Driscoll, President, Fifth District Counselor. Councilor Hogan, Second District Counselor. Yep, and yeah, what counselor at large? Hudson, Council President. I'm Bay, Council at Large. Anybody else? Yeah. Um, who, I don't know if it's Martha or Dave or who wants to do the jump in for the Bureau of Accounts? Sure. Uh, this is Martha Maywalt, First Deputy Commissioner of Finance. Um, so we'll start with the budget that is labeled um, Bureau of Treasury, and I'll announce that uh, really it should be called the City Payment Center. Um, we have combined, as, as if you've taken a look at this, you'll, you'll probably have noticed we have um, parking violations, activities, and staffing um, included in this budget. Um, so reflects. just to just to give the, the the Bureau of the Treasury the budget documents start on page ninety four if you have it open. Sorry to interrupt. That's all right. Um. So uh, the the budget reflects that we are um, in the process of combining and consolidating accounts receivable functions into uh, one location. Um, from the customer's perspective, that's one one place to play, pay your city bills. Um, as I said, we already have um, parking violations moved in with uh, what was the Treasury office. Um, and we are expecting to also move in the water finance staff. Water uh, bills are already paid in the um, always have been paid in the uh, Treasury office, but now uh, we'd like to have their staff moved in so that when people have questions about their account, the whole the whole payment service center is, is all in one place instead of sending people across the hall to get their water bill printed and then come back to pay it. So that's, um, that's the direction we're moving in. So we're, you know, some of the steps have been completed already. There's, there's more to go, such as Cross training and software implementation and, and that sort of thing. Um, I don't know, Councillor Rudd, how much time you'd like me to spend on um, the activities of the department, and do you want me to go through the indicators? I think uh, there's a couple that that. I think it's fine for you to take a few minutes to walk through the stuff that you're showing in the three pages we have, or whatever. To the extent you want to describe, okay. that would be helpful. Okay, um, so the, the, the narrative of the program responsibilities I've, I've pretty much described is that we now include um, uh, parking violations in, in, this, in this office. Um, although it isn't technically located in our office, um, the licensing function, business licensing function is part of, um, the, has always been part of the, the Bureau of Treasury, so this is included even though it, that activity takes place at the, um, it's included in this budget, but the activity takes place at the um, central permit office. Okay, so um, under the major functions and the um, proposed activity for uh, fiscal year 2021, um, tax bills issued, that'll stay flat. Um, we expect to produce, have to reproduce fewer tax bills. Um, you'll see that drops 
from 40,000 a year estimated to 25,000. That's um, a reflection of um, additional technology we're exploring where um, Invoice Cloud, the credit company, credit card company that uh, we contracted with their platform, when a customer steps up to the counter, the cashier calls up their name, their account, and they see everything that's there. So you see, uh, for example, that they owe $300 on their county, uh, 19, uh, county 2020 taxes. So they click that button and that button relates back to the software. So um, we don't have to have a coupon uh, printed to accompany the payment because the, the, the cashier processing is going to um, be a lot more uh, streamlined and efficient. So, um, so we'll be reproducing less bills, which is if you've ever stood in line during um, heavy tax payment time, it's a little crazy because you've got people standing in line thinking they're ready to pay and they need their bill so that they go to a different line. The reorganization of the, of the city payment center is going to change that where we'll have people on the front line, more of them than we have now. This is, this is the vision after cross training is done where you can step up whether it's whether you're paying um, parking, a parking ticket, a water bill, uh, your tax bill. You just step on up like you're at Marshall's and they called your number and, and you go on up and um, say what it is that you want to pay. Or maybe you're just, you just have questions and the same front line will, uh, will take care of you instead of it's very segmented now who you see and what part of the counter you go up to. So it, that should be a whole lot more uh, efficient. And, and we've got the cross training. I have a question uh, real quickly, Martha, sure. before you move on. Okay, so when you said there'll be more staff on the front line than you've seen before, is that going to eliminate some of the staff on the back end? Well, um, that's a nice segue into <laughs> into uh, this the staffing part of the budget. There are um, there are fewer positions. We've we've not filled some. Um, we will still have the folks we have behind the counter doing back office functions, we'll, we'll still continue to do them. But we've, we've not filled some um, positions that were open um, on the back end uh, this, in this year's budget. I don't know if I answered your question. We, we did, we had, um, there were two positions funded for, for example, for um, data entry. And those people would, key in um, parking tickets into the AIM software that have been issued by police. When the parking checkers issue a ticket, as, as I think you're aware, the, um, the device that they use updates uh, the AIM parking software automatically. Um, but the ones that are written by the police officers and, and county uh, sheriffs they have to be keyed in. We, we don't need that many staff to do that function. We certainly don't need to. We still have the function, but it can be incorporated into some other back office, more clerical type um, roles. And while I'm on that subject, that's another area where we um, are seeking more um, efficient processing. We, we, we purchased three sets of equipment for um, police officers to pilot um, issuing tickets the way the parking checkers do. So uh, we expect that without having to handwrite it, you know, to just scan, scan the license plate with, their, um, with the app on their phone and, and print off a ticket instead of, that's already filled out instead of, you know, taking the time to, um, to handwrite one. We think they're going to, we think ticket volume will increase. So that pilot is uh, just getting off the ground now. Um, but we, so, so that's another reason why we don't think we need quite so many back office clerical staff is because we're trying to, we're automating more things. Another example is, sorry. On the budget, like if you look at page, I'm on page 98, it has the salaries, it has like the personal services and has contracting. So you're talking about positions being empty. And like the sh 
page before page 97, it shows the head count going, the number of positions going from 13 to 22, or 14 yeah. to 23. So like, where are all the positions coming from? Are they coming from inside within departments and being put there? Are they really new positions? Because like the dollar amounts are going up and the head counts. So how do, can you explain yeah. that part? So this is, I just got this, yesterday afternoon, probably when you guys did. Um, this is a, a rather confusing presentation, but this, the, the 2021 numbers you're seeing reflect what the staff that were in the Parking Violations Bureau now counted here. So the 1920 column where you see 13 staff, also my document doesn't have page numbers, so I think I'm on the same page as you, but tell me if, if I'm not. Where, where it shows 13 staff. Right, the headcount yeah. page is what I was saying is 97, and then the dollars page is 98 right after. So keep going. Okay, okay. So the, the 13 reflects just Treasury staff, and the 18 reflects the new city payments office staff. So that's parking violations, and, and there's 18 of them. So it's up, even though I just said we're cutting staff, or we have eliminated some need for some, some staff. Um, does that does that make sense? Hey, Martha. Also, yeah. Uh, this is Brad O'Connor, Deputy Commissioner of Finance. Uh, Councilor Rudd, probably on page 104, you'll see what you're looking for. If I've got the same uh, page numbering as you, that's the Parking Violations Bureau. You're going to see uh, most of those staff lines go down to zero. Those are the positions that moved into Treasury. Okay. So there's no new, every position that gets added in the treasury is coming from one of the other finance department, one of the other finance areas, right? Specifically the, the parking violations bureau. Yes. Okay. Well, okay. So they don't all go over. So it goes from 13 to 22, but there were 11 and 11 goes to zero. So it's, I guess most of them go, but not all of them. Is that? Right, and that's that's kind of what I was explaining. Is there's the example of the data uh, entry equipment operator clerk. Um, we don't have any of the. We don't. We had two in the parking violations bureau. We have zero in the um, funded in the city payment budget for uh, for 2021. I, it's 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 confusing. I um, the merger the merger of the two um, bureaus a large part of the two bureaus makes it a little harder uh, to follow. Um, okay, if I go back to um, indicators, um, some of these are new activity indicators. I, I, I had lots more time, I could uh, probably estimate what they were in prior years, but they weren't something that we tracked on the uh, on the budget, but we're going to start tracking them now as a reflection of, of, of what goes on in, in this office. So some new activity indicators there. If I can move down to um, the, the late and delinquent um, tax administration and, and enforcement, um, I want to point out that along with um, pulling in accounts receivable functions into the city payment center. We moved out some functions or in the process of moving out some functions that are not accounts receivable related, such as um, once, a, once a property has been selected for foreclosure uh, for sale to the land bank, um, that processing is legal in nature. It's, it's the work of a, of a a paralegal essentially. And so um, while the remainder of the FY20 budget has um, the, the costs associated with that role in, in our budget, because that's where it started, in, in the 21 budget, you'll we have moved that function to the law department. Um, so the, there's a salary decrease in the SURA section of, um, of the city payment budget 
to reflect that that person's salary will not be in the law department and um, some associated costs such as um, ordering title work uh, will be transferred to the law department. Uh, the next section is general property tax administration. These are uh, items that, that largely that weren't tracked before and we're going to uh, track them. Um, we've estimated them for, for fiscal year 21 and, and we'll continue to track them as activity indicators in, in our budget. Um, probably the largest source, not probably, the largest source of um, the budget cost for the city payment center comes from uh, the administration of parking violations. And that is largely because of um, the boot fee cost, the, the city share of uh, what we pay um, HALOC to boot vehicles um, comes from our budget. And, and we've estimated, um, well, you don't see it here, you'll see it um, in the next section of the budget. Uh, it's not in the in the indicators here. Um, but that 35% reflects um, both the, the boot fees and the um, software. Uh, most software maintenance fees are in IT, but ours has historically been in our budget here. So that's, that's part of um, increasing the parking share of the, of the city payments budget. Um, moving on to, I don't know what page this is. It starts with, um, it's the last page of, of indicators, uh, activity indicators, that is. Um, we're expecting fewer uh, payments processed at the counter for parking violations and more online due to um, the convenience of uh, the new invoice cloud uh, payment software for, for online payments that we are in the midst of. Um, Seems like most of them on this page are pretty consistent, but could you just describe the revenue administration in general, the other, like the cash report that becomes 6,000 and then the BAA and water that becomes 23,000, like house? That's, again, that's, um, those are activity indicators that we did, never tracked before, but I think they're relevant, so we've added them to this year's budget. So it isn't a jump necessarily, it's just that now we're counting them. I see. Um, and the other department's cash reports is it's a significant part of what we do. All the, all the departments that aren't taking money in directly bring it to us, and then we, the cashiers process it. Um, that next category there of water, BAA, and other uh, direct payments um, it reflects things that are not um, where we aren't sending out the, the invoices, but we're taking in the payments. Okay. Uh, I think maybe we okay. pause and see if any of the counselors have questions. And then if we have a few minutes, maybe this is an appropriate time to discuss the, um, the approach to old parking tickets, if we have a couple minutes. Anybody have questions for Martha about the tr Bureau of the Treasury? Just for clarification, Marcia, I think um, basically a quarter of a million dollars added to the Bureau of Treasury is offset by a quarter of a million dollars from the Parking Violations Bureau, correct? Basically, that's what I'm seeing. Yes, in fact, it's, um, it's better than offset. The total budget for the City Payment Center for FY21 is 80% of what the combined FY20 budget was for, for parking and treasury uh, combined. So yeah, it, it does, it reflects, that we're comparing it to a combination of, of two different budgets. That's why what looks like an increase is actually a decrease. And okay. like I said, I, I, I just got this yesterday, so I didn't really have a chance to prepare a true comparison for you. So that that certainly looks um, like I'm saying we're saving and, and the, this reflects that we're not, but but that's, um, you'll, you'll see the savings. Yes. We've talked about the, the efficiency of the consolidation in the past, but I don't think we've ever actually reconciled the numbers. I think now that the numbers are there, maybe if there is just a one page summary that showed 
here's the combined new budget. Here's where it came from. We actually end up saving this number of positions and this many dollars. That would be at least informative, I think, for us. Happy to do it. Thank you. Other questions for Martha? Yes, Martha, question for you. So is the, the booting, is that inevitable? I mean, is that forever? How long do we have to go before we reduce what's owed to us in the tickets? I'm not sure I'm, I'm not sure I'm following what you're asking. Okay, so I would pay lock. So with, with pay lock, how long are we going to continue with the process with pay lock or have we gotten caught up? Oh, we're, we're not caught up. They, um, there's plenty of out, plenty of scoff laws out there where, um, they have tickets that make them eligible for booting and just a little walk down memory lane. Only tickets that were issued from, we only boot on tickets that were issued from March of 2004 and, and later um, are boot eligible. Um, that's when we started the new, the new, the AIM software. Um, that's when about, uh, I think that's a year later after the um, PVB Bureau itself was formed. Uh, but that's, there, there's thousands of tickets. Issues. So we're still After. we're still that far out there. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, so Martha, you're you're home free if you got a ticket that's 17 or 18 years old. Then right. Yeah, but don't don't broadcast. Little levity. That. I'm just. It's okay. I'm just <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's true. Okay. You're and not going to get booted. Question, and my last question for you, Martha. Have we seen an increase in the tax trust and have we seen people actually complying with their tax trust? Well, we monitor it, monitor them a lot more um, closely than we had in the past. And um, how do I want to say this? So there are, there are fewer, there's, I want to say a hundred, maybe 115 tax trusts. And at, when I started in this position in 2015, I think they were in the neighborhood of 300 plus. Um, it, it hadn't been managed particularly well, so people were still protected by the tax trust, even though they hadn't, either they hadn't been paying current taxes or they hadn't been paying their trust payments or both. Um, so we got that all cleaned up as we, um, in, uh, 2000, late 2017, we did a big uh, cleanup on that, and we don't default. We default. I don't even think we do one a month. So people are keeping up better. The small group that that has a has a trust now, um, it, they they keep up on them pretty well. So it. it, it there are fewer tax trusts, absolutely, than there used to be. They're not they're not requested terribly frequently. We 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 see a new as you'd expect when we send out a new batch of, um, or now I should say it's the law department sending out a new batch of um, 60 day notice to start a new group of, of properties down the land bank, land bank pipeline. Um, that's a time that we see people calling about um, starting a tax trust. So. Um, Frequently, so given the president's question, do you think we could add the tax trust as an activity indicator to the property tax general administration of this budget thing? I know you don't look at this budget indicator stuff all year long, but um, do you think you could work with the budget director to just have that be one of the annual indicators that we could see? Actually, actually, it is. It's on the bottom of, <coughs> sorry, whatever the first page is of, the, of this um, budget. It's the very last item. Uh, it shows 120. Oh, uh, well, that was a long page. Tax trust administered. Did you find it? It shows 120 every year, though, and I get suspicious. Is it really 120 every estimate proposed? It like there's no variation. Right. If this went back far enough, you would see big variation. You would see you would see the 300 plus that I mentioned before. If it went back a couple more years. But this reflects the cleanup that we did. But I can I can tighten that up a little bit for you. Okay. 
there's somebody who could talk about the um concept of amnesty, how that relates to this department or whatever unit and uh what the approach is given there's revenue for that. Frank, you want it or me? Do you think that's a good time for uh, will there be a better time than now for that topic? Frank? No, I think uh, Frank Kaleva, the city's chief administrative officer. No, I think this is a good opportunity to to talk about that, um, uh, Councillor. Um, it's it's a relatively straightforward proposition. We've got uh, somewhere um, approximately twelve million dollars in um, aged parking violations. Um, a good number of those are boot eligible. But a good number of those, uh, for whatever reason, um, are difficult uh, to boot or are not eligible to boot. Um, I think it's been, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Martha, I think it's been about a decade since we've done an amnesty. The idea being that um, we would uh, waive all fines and penalties for the, uh, the within the, the state regulations. Um, and. Um, simply uh, charge the the uh, the core fee and uh, the history of amnesty programs um, that we've been able to to find in the city records is that we collect about 10 percent of what's outstanding so if we've got 12 million dollars that's outstanding um, we'd look to to uh, for about a 1.2 million dollar uh, bump I think we budgeted actually for a million flat um, so, uh, our goal is to get that going as early in the um, budget year as we can without, um, the, the, there, there are, uh, historians at city hall who remember the last time this was done and lines around the block. Um, so we're going to try and, uh, do this at a time when it doesn't compete with other payments and we're going to, uh, definitely push, um, electronic and, uh, mail payment processes. So on the point, I would love one page summary that gave the outline, like, for instance, it should show how many tickets are there, what's the value of the core fine, what's the value of the fees and penalties that we're waiving, um, what's the percent, like, what number are boot eligible, what are not, why, why are the reasons why something's not boot eligible, typically, and then I would even say to the extent you have the historic historian there to inform what happened a decade ago. Sure. Use data to describe what happened in the past and why you think what will happen in the future. Sure. Uh, ha happy to do that. Um, we will do this, by the way, in uh, uh, conjunction with, I think, um, Councillor Rudd, you know, the, the other councillors may not know that we have been uh, looking at um, uh, going to uh, beginning to use an outside collection agency on some of these the outside collection agents are uh, able to do uh, first off they're considered they're more professional and more proficient um, at uh, uh, pursuing folks who uh, just refuse to pay what to do um, but they're also able to do things like um, uh, go outside of New York State um, much more easily than we are. Um, so we have been looking and we'll probably bring to you um, an RFP for a uh, third party collector of uh, some of these fines and fees. So we would couple that with amnesty. So the, the, um, the carrot will be the amnesty and the stick will be uh, going, uh, moving these to a collections agent uh, after the amnesty expires. There might be questions, but can I just one second? I know we have these back-to-back -back hearings, and um, I think they're all on the same WebEx link, which makes sense. So I think we can just keep going, but I would, and the, the overlap seems pretty heavy between the Bureau of Treasury and the parking ticket um, Bureau. So I think at this point, I would just say, this is the beginning of the meeting. We can end the, officially the Treasury one and begin the parking ticket one. And we, if you have more questions, we can still ask them, but. For practicality, let's say this is uh, the beginning of the parking ticket violation, which is where the 11 positions disappeared from to go into the Treasury. So they're very much related. And with that, we can keep talking about this amnesty concept to the extent people have. Yeah, Council, I have a quick question. So, have we done any research on if 
Having an amnesty program reduces the collection rate, you know, in other years. Like, uh, is there a moral hazard here where people are going to say, you know, I'm just going to not pay and wait until they do another amnesty? So the, the way it's been structured in the past, Council Green, is uh, to avoid that as best possible. So there's a there's a there's a cutoff point um, for what is eligible for amnesty, usually you know, within a, a, a few month window. And um, it is rare because it's such a rare occurrence. It, it's a, a, a once in a decade kind of a occurrence. Um, it doesn't really make financial sense for someone to, to, to do that, particularly if we demonstrate, and I think the booting program does, and a third party collection layered in, if we demonstrate that we're serious about collecting, it really doesn't uh, serve anybody's financial interest to do that. So, I mean, who are the people that are the biggest over normally in the city doing it? I mean, what is a typical user like this? <laughs> Martha, you may have looked at this more recently than I have. It's an interesting collection of people. My recollection is that we have a uh, attorney in the suburbs who comes into the city on a regular basis, who is uh, uh, one of our largest scofflaws, and and the uh, 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 we're not uh, we're not able to boot him out in the suburbs, and um, he is somewhat defiant. Um, so we'd love to turn him over to a third party collector. Um, so it's a, and then there are folks who, who do, uh, who work in the city, and then there are folks in the residential areas who just choose to uh, ignore um, on a fairly continual basis uh, the, um, the, the parking regulation. So it's a, I wouldn't say from my looking at it, uh, and this is probably four or five months ago that I looked at it, um, I didn't see any real consistent type of, of violator, uh, a wide range. I agree. Why wouldn't that person be booted when they're in the city? Like if they're accumulating tickets, why wouldn't they get booted at the time they're accumulating tickets? They, if, if it's a, it's been a timing thing. It's been a cat and mouse game. Uh, that, that, that person has, uh, made a, made a clear choice that he's going to try and uh, continue this for as long as he can. Um, so the, the, uh, the boot wagon, I, I guess. Just audio. Right place at the right time. I'm sorry, Councillor. No, I was just saying that we lost audio for a minute. I, whatever you said last, I, I couldn't hear it. Uh, just that he's he's actually seems to have made a game of it, and uh, he goes to somewhat great lengths to avoid the the boot man when he's in the city. Frank, can I ask you a question? This is um, Helen. How long has this been going on with this particular guy? Oh, my, I, I, I don't want to say offhand, President Hudson, my recollection is it's quite a while. Okay, so we just, mm, okay. Mm. Councilor, I have a question. Um, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, so, Looking at the, the previous budget and even now this one, uh, the, I think the numbers are self-explanatory increases and um, Treasury is understood. But with the recent requests that the mayor put into the state to activate what's been a dormant uh, parking bureau, parking authority, how does that factor into this situation? Seems like, you know, I understand the move into finance but you're only gonna you're giving consideration to moving it out independent uh, so you know i'd like to understand and maybe this is not uh the appropriate venue but this is relative and, and you know uh just may, maybe um maybe there's a short answer to be given and then a longer discussion be had later sure uh, the short answer is no there is no intent at this point counselor to move parking violations into the authority. The authority would be um, very much more narrowly defined than I think it's been talked about in the past. In the past, it was talked about as comprehensive. It would be, uh, it was always looked at as garages, surface lots, 
um, street parking and uh, parking violations. We are looking at reactivating the authority solely for the garages. So all other parking service lots, um, the um, on street parking and parking violations would remain as is. The authority would be solely for the garages. A follow up question, but uh, I, I think that's for another. Marsa, right, go ahead. No, Marsa, I just was wondering how how we doing as far as like uh, folks who are used to paying in person, and now because of what we're going through, they're not able to pay in person. I imagine getting a lot of phone calls about that. I've seen a little bit in the newspapers about it and some stuff that's emanated from the city. But could you give me a little uh, us a little update on that? Yeah, we're we're telling people. Um, where to get a money order <laughs> um, just so that they can pay by mail. Um, I think more people are paying online um, and, and obviously by mail. Those are really the only uh, two alternatives left for them. But um, you're right, we're getting a lot of questions about it. And um, amazingly enough, hourly if not more frequent people knocking on uh, on the doors here um thinking they can get in and wondering why the doors are locked um shall we try to explain to them what the deal is but um i think people are okay with it okay what about that uh there was an idea about a drop box whose idea was that is that a uh, is that going to happen or what? Yeah, we're we're exploring the logistics of it, um, of how to mount it in, in a way that is reachable from the outside, obviously. Um, and I won't bore you with the logistics. Yeah, we're pursuing it. I'm excited by it. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I, I think it'll be a convenience for people long after, um, well, long after social distancing is, is not a thing anymore. A girl can dream. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Councilor Rudd, do you want me to spend a few minutes on the Parking Violations Bureau budget now? Sure. Okay, so as, as we've described, the, the staff that uh, related to administration of, of the tickets and, the, um, and their payments, uh, has been moved over into uh, Treasury, what is now the, the City Payment Center budget. Um, what remains is the um, hourly uh, wages for um, hearing examiners and some, some really basic um, administrative costs for them, um, some printing, um, and that's really kind of it. How many hearings they do in an hour? Examiners. Well, that's a great question. So, um, live hearings, we schedule um, we schedule them for every ten, or we have some hearing examiners who would prefer to have a fifteen-minute interval for each um, for each hearing. This is this is for live hearings, which we aren't doing right now. Um, how many uh, ex parte hearings can they crank through, you know, when there's no one in front of them, they're just looking at paperwork is, is um, can be uh, impressive. We, we got quite a, a backlog, got through quite a backlog um, a few months ago, maybe last month, a lot of the progress was made on it by um, one particular hearing examiner who really put in some uh, dedicated time to it and, and found a way to get through them more efficiently. Um, I don't really have a number for you on on, um, on that just because we kind of struggled with it for a while, getting getting the right volume from them. Um, so, but, but related to that, in terms of efficiencies, one of the things we want to explore is, um, the, the first one should be an easy one, and that is requesting 
hearing online. In other words, have a form on the, on the city website where you can fill in your particulars and, um, and attach documents and, and submit your um, ex parte hearing request um, online. Or even if you insist on being seen for a live hearing, you can at least start that process and submit your doc um, online. And that'll, that'll reduce staff time. Um, and we hope it could make the uh, hearing examiners more efficient. And another, um, another thing we're gonna explore is actually having the hearings, live hearings conducted uh, remotely. Um, it requires, well, as we all learned, um, requires having a remote audio and video uh, set up. Um, so we, we do have some logistics to figure out there. Um, but that's, that's another um, avenue to make things more efficient. Is there anything in uh, there that would show roughly how many hours the hearing examiner spent in a year? Because like I see the rate and I see the number of folks, but is there a line that would no, allow it, to see how many hours? We do have, uh, if I haven't, why don't I get that for you, counselor? Okay, because then I was just thinking you could tie to the activity indicators of the number of mail hearings, live hearings, and uh, how the screen, like they do 10 an right. hour, four an hour, one an hour, whatever it is. And the main reason I ask is because um, the $75 an hour fee, it just seems like we probably have some tickets that are pretty low in value. So it doesn't seem like somehow we shouldn't spend more than we collect, so to speak, for the process. Right, right. Uh, Councilor, uh, Frank to leave again. I, I would, we agree the adjudication process really needs to be looked at. It's been on our list of, of things to look at and to, to streamline. Um, the, the concern, of course, being that no matter what the size of the ticket, everyone has a right to a hearing, um, a full and complete hearing by state law. So we, we do need to make sure that we do that, but we certainly agree that there's a, a lot of efficiencies uh, that we can find in that whole adjudication system. Thanks, Frank. Um, there's not much left then of the PVB budget. It now represents just the um, hearing examiners. I don't know if there's additional questions about that. So I, I guess from my perspective, just the summary of like how many hours roughly they worked and that would help. Yep, I'll get that for you. Anybody else questions for parking or treasury? City Payment Center. I'm assuming that's just a name on the door. Otherwise, I think we require a charter change. Council, counselors, this is Dave Delick. Uh, yes, we, we will be submitting legislation to a change the charter. All right, we'll think about it. <laughs> okay. Anybody else? Just uh, uh, in, in the as 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 uh, many of you know, in the in the world of finance, treasury means something completely different than the way we use it. So, uh, and it doesn't treasury mean is basically us taxpayers. collecting all the money, right? Say that again. Treasury is us collecting all the money, and from the city perspective. Yes, correct. That, that's exactly right. And then the next couple budget hearings have to do with us paying out the money. Okay, with that, I think we all have 15 minutes to get coffee or go to the bathroom or whatever before the next um, meeting begins. So thank you. See you all in a little while. Thank you. 
is the uh, I guess is, I don't I mean I'm gonna put Sir under finance and I'm just, who is Sir you is Sir economic development? Uh, Sir may be a blend between neighborhood and economic development. I'm assuming. I don't know. Do you want to do you want to do you want to run the show? I thought Sir was after this. This is not Sir now, right? Oh no, no, I'm one ahead. Yeah, this is a uh... oh, Bureau of Accounts. Yeah, this is me. All right, so this is a budget hearing for uh, the Bureau of Accounts. Councillor Rudd, the finance chair. Um, we have Councillor at Large Green, Councillor at Large Bay, uh, Second District, Councillor Hogan, Councillor at Large Paniagua, uh, President Hudson. Missing anybody? Okay. Um, who's the, the ring leader for this one? Is it Brad? Is it Martha? Or not Martha? Shouldn't it be somebody out of uh, Mary Vosler's office? I would assume. Can you hear me? Brad. Uh, yep, this is Brad O'Connor, Deputy Commissioner of Finance. I can talk you through this. Lovely. Go for it. All right. So um, I'll just walk you through as it as it's laid out here in the budget, starting on page 99. Um, program responsibilities for the Bureau of Accounts. Um, really, there are four uh, key responsibilities. First one is dispersing city funds. Uh, Central Payments Office collects the money. We pay the money. Um, we uh, sell bonds and notes. Um, we handle the accounting for the city and all of the departments, and we also handle the payroll function, including um, the pension roles. Um, what's really implied with all of this is, is as the official scorekeeper for the city's finances, we're also responsible for the city's internal control environment. Uh, those are the things that ensure that our numbers are accurate. We're getting the most out of our money um, by working efficiently and effectively, and we are working to prevent and detect theft and fraud. Um, what you'll see here is um, we've got an increase in our budget. And that's driven primarily by this uh, review and overhaul of the internal control environment. Um, what the external auditors have said uh, for the past uh, several years is that we're lacking the internal controls to effectively manage our city's finances. Um, as we dig into that, um, we can see multiple areas where we are inaccurate, inefficient, and insecure. Uh, the proposed budget here is to uh, find a couple of people that can really dig in and get us to a point where we are uh, being fully responsible for the city's finances and we and we can we can look at the public and tell them yes we know where your money's coming from yes we know where where it's going and yes we are confident we're using it effectively uh, i think in in previous years the bureau of accounts has been an easy place to uh save some money um, it's not the prettiest bureau. It's not out in the front lines. When someone says, hey, what do you want to do? Do you want to be less confident in the numbers? Or do you want your potholes not filled? Do you want, your, do you want a slower police response time? Um, it's easy to say, uh, yeah, I want those things that affect me directly. Let's cut the Bureau of Accounts. Um, that was a a short-term decision and in, in the long run uh, we're paying for it um, we want to uh, kind of flip that to to get us back to where uh, not entirely where we should be you know we're still we're still conscious of um, the fiscal situation we're in but um, to stop some of that bleeding and get a little more control over what we're doing financially and I think in the long run that's going to save us a lot of money. 
uh, with regard to the major function, functions, you'll see not a lot of change here. Um, we're doing what we've always done. We're just going to be doing it a little bit different. Um, I can dig into any of those major functions if you want. Um, if not, I can talk a little bit more specific about the numbers. Based on what you were saying, um, in the previous budget hearing with the Treasury, we talked about the new positions there and the new money there and how it was part of the consolidation from parking and how it was actually a decrease in overall staffing. So as opposed to that, this is an in, this is just a straight increase, right? It's not coming from anywhere else or anything. Uh, there, there is a piece that's coming from parking violations. The deputy commissioner position used to live in parking violations. It's now in Bureau of Accounts. And then we added two positions and eliminated one. So it's a net uh, increase of one position. You know the net increase of dollars? Um, I don't know that offhand, no. Um, I don't, you know, it's, um, I'd, have to, I'd have to look at it. The, the deputy commissioner position is flat. Um, and then uh, I would say it's probably seventy-five to eighty thousand dollar net increase beyond that. Question, uh, Council Rudd. It would appear, and you may have mentioned this. Uh, it would appear that a big part of the bump is this thirty thousand in, in overtime pay. Explain that. Yeah, we. We had um, we had some vacancies in uh, fiscal year 20, and so you know our accounting staff is usually at five. We were down to three for a couple of months in fiscal year 20, so we had uh, some of those three people putting in a lot of extra time to make up for that gap. We're now back up to five, so we don't expect to incur those those costs. Well, I know, you know, you're, you're absolutely correct about what's been recommended by auditors to the city administration for the entire time I've been here. And I think uh, our auditor could attest to as much and has always been concerned, concern, uh, concerns rather about internal controls. And we often found money kind of laying around sometimes to the tune of $500,000 or more. Uh, and, and one particular department I won't mention so at least the focus on this uh, is greatly appreciated. And I agree it was a mistake to treat accounts as the uh, stepchild. Commissioner, I got a, a few questions. Uh, this is Pat Hogan. Uh, so all the, all the jobs I'm assuming below deputy commissioner uh, are civil service positions, correct? Um, not entirely sure about that yet. The two newly created positions, accounting director and senior accountant, we've got to run those by the county to see where they land. Uh, I'm not sure if they will be. Actually, you know what? Um, it looks like they're not listed as civil service now, but I'm not sure. But they, they've got to, the county's got to review the job description and see if it lines up. So, in your job description, you're asking for people with, you know, I mean, are these they going to be CPAs or have an, the, obviously have a significant yeah, amount of experience? Yeah, the accounting, the accounting director uh, will be a CPA. I mean, that's, that's really going to be the person who's focused almost entirely on making sure our internal control environment is where it needs to be for a quarter billion dollar operation. And the senior accountant uh, is, uh, you know, I, I'd call it a CPA preferred. This is someone who has uh, seen uh, the way accounting works in multiple organizations and has uh, had a role in leading and directing um, the accounting. Well, um, you know, I, can, I want to echo Councillor Bay's comments regarding uh, internal controls. I think this is... I commend you on doing this. 
it's been my experience with the city that many times the payroll person in certain departments is the same thing as the person who pays the bills and basically is uh, sort of a utility person for the city, uh, uh, each city department. And a lot of times, it's, like I said, in my experience, it's been somebody who's been there for a while but doesn't really have a background in any kind of financial education at all. And so maybe if you could elaborate a little bit, would this be like a, a, a way to educate some of those folks in what you need? Yeah, absolutely. If I could leave, I'll jump in uh, and then let um, Deputy Commissioner uh, O'Connor uh, fill in the color. But our strategy over the last couple of years has been to consolidate finance as much as possible for exactly the reason that you just described. So, because we can't afford to have somebody who's um, got an accounting background out in the field, the, the idea has been to move as much of that um, financial accounting into a centralized function, raise the level of that function in, in City Hall to be more supportive to departments. And Brad, if you wanna finish that off. Yeah, really, it's, um, you know, we, this, this doesn't get us too ideal. This is, this is step one, and I think it's going to be a massive step one. And I think um, adding the uh, people that we desperately need is, is a good start. Um, the other piece is just optimizing the people that we have. We, you know, like uh, Frank said, we've got some great people out there in the field who just don't have the education, don't have the experience, and frankly have never gotten the direction they needed. So um, another part of this role is educating all these people, training all of them and retraining them so that we have one voice coming from uh, the Bureau of Accounts. And, and we've got everyone acting consistently, uh, both within the Bureau of Accounts and um, out in the other departments, uh, so that we can kind of control the flow of information and hopefully we get a better end product when we work with these people a little bit more. I, you know, like I said, I, I commend you for doing this. I just would caution that, that as long, I, I think this is a great idea uh, and I hope you're on the right, you know, I, I think you're on the right path, but, you know, I just would caution you and, and to make sure that this also facilitates the actions of operating of the operating departments and doesn't inhibit them in any way. So that's all I got to say. Yeah, th thanks for that. And that's uh, certainly the the number one priority. I mean, we see, we are we see ourselves as a support function. You know, we we don't want to direct anything that the city is doing. We want to uh, assist and complement what the city's doing and make sure we're doing it. Uh, in a fiscally responsible way. Good. Well, that, you know, that's the thing. You guys are our yardstick. And, you know, it's been it's been uh, a little underutilized in the past. So uh, we, we certainly don't want to confuse or understate the value of uh, being on top of how we're spending and receiving money. Well said. Thank you. This is the right timer if 20 minutes now is the right time for this question but when i heard counselor hogan ask if all the positions were civil service i thought oh what do you do if you don't have a civil service position you put it on sura so i looked at the sura list and the sura list has two finance positions but, um so one of them is in treasury it seems like and the other one's a payroll coordinator so i don't know if that person which part of finance they fall in but then the part that i just flagged for anyone doing it like the list that just came to us a half hour ago with the sort of payroll the people for the two finance positions show up on the list twice so they show up on the first page and the second page the first page is 2019 page is oh my god i gotta read the header it's, it's, <laughs> that's good it's two different years look at mike green on the ball <laughs> All right, all right, fine, fine. Good. Never mind. Other questions for the um, Bureau of Accounts? Uh -oh. All right, 
well, we don't need to belabor anything. So uh, I guess we have another 15 minutes before the next uh, meeting. You know, we do have, uh, it wasn't on the agenda, uh, probably because it's a new department under finance. But if you remember a couple of months ago, uh, we moved what was the division of purchase into finance and it's now being called uh, the division of financial operations. Um, so now might be a good time to go over that budget. It's a, a little bit smaller operation, but um, Alicia Madden, uh, if you're on director of financial operations, you can walk us through that if we've got the time. Starting to think I am I like on. All charter names. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. So we're on page 106. Um, so counselors, hi, this is Alicia Madden. This is really nothing new from what we've talked about before. Um, now we're just officially a bureau under the Department of Finance. Um, we are responsible for procurement, purchasing, and payments. Um, so we create requisitions, which the county makes into purchase orders. And then once we receive the items, we pay them and create vouchers within the PeopleSoft financial system. Um, our budget is pretty small. It's really just four people. And then we have a little bit in there for know office supplies and training so please let me know if you have any questions about any of it similar to the ones we've discussed earlier so it's, it's going from zero to four it's going from zero dollars to 226 so how much of that comes from other places and how much of it's new it's entirely from other places all we did was consolidate so um, these positions were initially out in departments for instance Anne Marie Deegan and Jenna Vendetti both worked in the parks department. And then in September of 2018 is when we did the pilot to centralize everyone. Um, previously in this fiscal year, we moved everyone into the purchase division under budget. Um, and then since that's really not where these responsibilities belonged, we've now moved everyone into a Bureau of Financial Operations. So there's no new dollars or people here. It's entirely just consolidating financial operations and putting it where it should be. Counselors, this is uh, Brad O'Connor again. You'll see uh, page 80 in the budget is the division of purchase uh, financial budget. And the that's where the, the, the positions are coming from. So you'll see a $280,000 decrease from 2020 to 2021. I do think this is where, I mean, I kind of asked for this before with the individual pieces, but maybe it makes sense for the whole finance section of the stuff. But and when we all, when we allowed all the changes, I know there were a bunch of visuals that showed the positions moving from one office to another and whatnot. But I do think it would be helpful to have like a comprehensive, I don't know if it fits on one page, two page, like, summary of where the money goes to and what's new versus being replaced and how because it seems like we're saving probably overall but but maybe we're using some savings to fund some of the new stuff in i don't know like i just feel like there's probably a way to think of finance holistically and say look here we've rearranged the pieces here's where pieces go here's where we save a little and here's where we're investing a little more and right now it's hard to totally see in a short Quick picture. There's some organization, uh, Frank Kaliba, uh, uh, Council. There's some org charts and some internal documents that we use that did exactly that. And um, uh, Alicia Mann and I will take a look at those and update them and consolidate those and get those to you so that you've got that visual. Alicia did a ton of work on this in preparation for the move. Right. I don't remember all the like headcount stuff. I just feel like it's a budget version of it, I guess. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, I, I was going to echo that too, uh, Councilor Rudd. Uh, you know, the idea of efficiency is good. You know, Frank. You know, when we obviously can see where the savings are, 
And I would think that savings is ultimately what we're after. This, this particular one, um, just to be clear, uh, was not so much a savings as it was moving it so that it was aligned with finance department as opposed to the budget department. It, it, and this was pretty much a one-to-one -one move. So there was there were no savings in here, but we think that there's some efficiency and effectiveness. But th there's a, uh, Alicia did a lot of work on uh, showing that the alignment between all of the finance and finance related departments, and we'll provide that to you in a, in a much more over, uh, kind of an overview that'll give you a picture of it. Any other questions for anything, really anything finance oriented since basically all the finance departments went this morning? Um, just one other thing. I, I don't I don't know exactly where this falls under, but maybe Frank or Brad could answer this question. Who would be are you gonna sign somebody or in somebody's bailiwick would be the bird dogging of grants and where grants are in different different entities? To the city, would who would be in ch charge of that? So, to the extent dogging, is that like a West End term? Does that mean like somebody shoots a bird and then the dog chases it and brings it back? It, it, you know what? You are, and I'll tell you, you are a perceptive young man, yeah. Councilor Rudd. That's that's cool. That falls to the what is currently called the research uh, department. So Janet Burke is, uh, and we consolidate as much of that grant management um, under the research department as we possibly can. The, the one department that manages, uh, well, that isn't true. It isn't just one department. Um, uh, neighborhood business development has its own grant infrastructure just because of the volume that they do and the, the amount that they do, but they work very collaboratively with uh, the research department counselor. Um, there are some other city departments that uh, tend to manage their own grants. It's very, grants are very relationship driven. And so there's some, you know, decades long established um, relationships with funders um, that folks are rightfully reluctant to, to seed. But um, to what I think is your implicit point, um, Councillor, we are concerned on an ongoing basis that we are compliant, um, both from a financial and from a time standpoint that we are maintaining the, both the outcomes and the requirements that the funder has. And uh, so we're, we're working to find ways to do that with, to your earlier point, not putting any kind of constraints on the operations of a department, but providing them with professional grant management um, support. So that is all under the the uh, office. That was a really long uh, <laughs> answer to your question. It's the department. It's the it's the grant research folks. I just I get concerned when I legislatively when people who are in the state government sometimes ask, you know, they have worked hard to get a grant for the city of Syracuse and and uh, and Lou. I mean, they worked hard to get a grant for the city of Syracuse and expect a certain project to happen and it doesn't happen and uh it's you know vexing to them so what is uh council this is sharon um many times that was the parks department and julie has done an amazing job in in getting projects moving and completed under that circumstance you're absolutely right okay thank you and, and, and just one period at the end of that um uh, counselor we are in the process of turning on the PeopleSoft uh, capital management project management module that will allow us to manage grants directly in the core system. So we'll have greater transparency to all of that and be able to provide you a better window into all of that at the same time. It'll take us a little while to get that up and running. It's not the highest priority, but um, Alicia Madden and the financial operations team have been working on that. Okay, thank you. Council, just one more thing I'll add is that sometimes we find ourselves in the position where the tail is kind of wagging the dog. So constituents will, will go to their state representative and get, you know, allocations for a particular say parks project. 
and the project never costs what the allocation is. And so sometimes that is the delay, but the management has been improved greatly. Okay, thank you. Uh, I know exactly what you're talking about. Um, any questions? Mr. Auditor, do you have anything you're overlooking? Anything that you think we should ask? He's talking, but his mic is muted. <laughs> you got to unmute. There you go. Fine. I appreciate being able to listen in. And at the time of my hearing, I'll be able to share some things with you too that I've been working with the administration on and so, and so on and so forth. So thank you for the opportunity. Sounds good. There's been a lot of mayors that would love to mute the auditor's microphone <laughs> over the history. <laughs> <laughs> And this particular auditor, too, probably. <laughs> Do not count this administration among those counts. We value the, uh, the relationship with the auditor, and it's uh, it's been great so far. <laughs> Keep the peace. <laughs> All right, we have Sarah in like four minutes, so. I guess you're looking yeah, at uh, that. That is actually me, Councilor Rush. So we got about three and a half minutes. So if people take a break or not, we're here. I'll let Councilor Bay take over. All right, folks. I'm assuming everybody's present. We're going to get started. This is the. <clears throat> Budget hearing for SOAR, Syracuse Urban Renewal Agency, Khalid Bay, Chairman of uh, Economic Development, Downtown Metropolitan Planning. We have on, again, uh, Councilor at Large Tim Rudd, Council President Helen Hudson, uh, Councilor at Large, not here, Councilor Matt Green, but I don't see him, Councilor for the 2nd District, Pat Hogan, uh, and as the others rejoin us, Make sure everybody's aware we have our deputy mayor who's going to present uh, for sure. And so, deputy mayor, if you would uh, please take it away. I'm here too. This is Rita. Hey, uh, Councillor Paniago is here as well. Yes, sir. Uh, Councillor, um, I'm a little thrown off. My um, Collins, this is going to be a swan song hunt. Um, Hearing and he just notified us his son in law just died of a heart attack in his home. Oh. 41 years old. So uh, I'm trying to get my bearings together right now. Um, so we're presenting on the uh, Syracuse Urban Renewal Agency. Um, I have John Ravenese, I have Dave Dovecchio on the line, I believe. Um, Sarah is a uh, is a public benefit corporation um, funded formed under the general municipal law, and it's uh, designed to carry out renewal strategies um, in areas throughout several areas of the city of Syracuse. Um, it, it has a board comprised of the mayor, the president of the common council. Um, the commissioner of MBD, um, the director of finance. Um, I know that um, there are several components. I was hoping that Dave could chime in to talk about the last board meeting. And I know you probably know about it. Deputy Mayor, it's Brad O'Connor. Uh, Dave is on the line. He's just trying to unmute his mic. Okay. Yes. Can, can, you, can you hear me? Yes, Dave. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to step over to the side. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Just a, I heard I heard some of what was just presented. Yes. The agency uh, is a public benefit corporation, and we do file documents with New York State. Now, just to give you a quick background of the agency, there's three funds that we have in the agency, the revolving fund, 
which is the payroll. And I think the deputy mayor presented the the two-page document to you that just summarizes the various employees on the payroll. That's the major fund of the agency. Then we have a, a, uh, a development fund that many years ago was given uh, from a tax amnesty, amnesty program years back. CIDA was given money and, mm -hmm. and Urban Renewal was given uh, some money. Uh, that's the development fund and they make various loans to housing related, uh, for housing related purposes the various agencies. And then the third fund is the New York State, um, the Grants Assistance Fund, which gets grants from New York State or, or even the county has over the years provided some grants to the, to the, to the agency for various housing related purposes. So that's the major, the major components of the, of the, of the agency. And, and what we do, there's a set of books, there's a separate financial statement audit that's released on that. And what we do here in finance and as part of the payroll function um, is, is, is all these individuals on the payroll will get invoiced back to the various departments. So as the counselors are preparing and reviewing all these budgets, uh, you're, you're really approving the budget of the urban regional agency at the very, because it's all reimbursable. All the expenses of the revolving fund get reimbursed by the general fund. Okay, so that, that just to give you a kind of a, a brief um, background as to what the agency does. Um, uh, if I could, and, and I'm gonna ask for your forgiveness early on, Deputy Mayor and uh, Commissioner, uh, I'm gonna dial it back a little bit. Um, and you probably can guess where I'm going. There's been a long standing effort uh, pushed by as counselors uh, to comply with what was essentially uh, ordered by the state, and that was to move people off of the sewer paper. I know that was the effort, or at least it appeared to be a slow effort of the past administration. And when I look over the list, obviously we have some very key people there. Um, and so, you know, just, just for the sake of uh, those listening who may not be aware of that discussion, if, if somebody can provide uh, maybe a short snapshot for why, because uh, I know there was uh, why we, you know, we're still paying people off the sewer. We, uh, I, I state that because there was in the past administration an effort to slowly remove people off the sewer payroll. Uh, the concern was because of the fact that it was a separate uh, financial sheet, if you will. Um, and you know, there may be, I, I don't know, there may be a valid argument uh, for uh, reimbursement as opposed to uh, paying straight. And I would assume it has a lot to do with uh, our, our budget gap and, and the like. Uh, but, you know, uh, Commissioner or W Mayor, if somebody could just maybe give us a snapshot. And, and if that is still the intent and or effort of this administration to shrink that uh, the number of people being paid through sewer. So, um, I don't know, I didn't, okay, I make sure I didn't mute myself. So, um, this is the deputy mayor. So, it is, it is the commitment and um, it has been steadily reducing even from last year to this year, you see that it reduced by about seven people. Um, several of those individuals were actually code inspectors who took civil service exams in that um, division and now um, are employed under um, civil service lines. Um, and again, so this is, as we look at, you know, the, the, the bulk of the individuals are, um, related to NBD code, that be code and permit, um, law functions related to, um, neighborhood revitalization and our NBD staff. Um, and then I can talk about, um, the, others. But the bulk of them at this point is that. Um, so we feel that those positions do line up with the mission of SURA. Um, that again is up for further, further discussion. I think we have really been looking at moving. Um, I just had a, a text exchange with Brad about some of the finance people that I saw in there and, um, you know, being new, he didn't know the history. He said they are vital positions. So I said, he and I will continue, we'll look at that and to see why 
they are on Sura, for example. Um, but the it is the it is as we continue to reduce the list. Um, but I would like to to have a further discussion about where I see the code inspection and the NBD staff as really part of um, in line with what the Sura mission is overall. Okay, uh, and, and you know maybe we could have. Uh meeting or a discussion at a later date. And obviously we had to talk about the budget, but you know, I, this is a big part of it, of course. Mm -hmm. You know, and certainly while I understand that uh, it may be the position that uh, those workers fit with SUR's mission, so to speak, um, obviously we would need that confirmation from the state as well. Mm -hmm. For sure that we're doing what we're supposed to do or not, not certainly not insinuating that nobody is. Completely. Yeah, I have saw the numbers shrunk, but I just wanted to kind of put that out there. Mm -hmm. you, know, they're, they're, you know, I when I look over it, and and you may have taken from wrong. Obviously, the bulk of the the sewer money is for payroll. Yes. Um, and you know, I this may be for uh, in some ways another discussion as well. I don't want to get into the detail. Mm -hmm. And and you know, there are there appears to me to be at least couple of redundancies in position uh, and and I'm talking like at, at maybe the uh, uh, assistant director or director level there appears to be some redundancies it seems like we're paying two people for the same job I don't want to call anybody out so I won't do that here okay but, and you know and, and NBD specifically appears to be uh, two of the same person so to speak uh, so I, I Without getting into personnel stuff, which we know we can't do, yeah. Um, somehow, I, th I think we need some clarity on on those things. And I, you know, if you can, I, I don't know if any of the attorneys are on, but I'm being very cryptic right now, so not to uh, mm -hmm. anybody's personnel business. But this is a sticky situation because that's ultimately what we're talking about here with service personnel. Yep. So. Um... Absolutely, and and thank you for respecting the the, the personnel um, stickiness of this conversation. But uh, yeah, I will look at this and look at this even deeper and see. And I think we should have subsequent um, continued conversations. Deputy Mayor, for clarity, what what is the total amount of money being uh, expenses out of SOAR? Because I was trying to identify. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dave, do you have that right off? I I do not have that. We'd have to get back to the council with that. Um, but basically, the, I was thinking if you could take the list that you shared in the PDF, and if you could sort it by full time and part time, and then okay. sum it with the number of part time, number of full time, and the number of uh, the value of the salaries for the full time, that would make it easier to see what is happening from year to year. So just let me repeat what you said. Separate full time, part time, and those relevant salaries, so we can compare full time to part time. Is that accurate? Yeah. Right now, the list is mixed, and it only sums the positions, not the dollars. Okay. Yeah. And I, I was looking in the uh, special objects of expense. The, the next page after the heading page is blank, and so it appeared, but the uh, the list of, of of money or expenses appeared to come before the title page in, in, in the packet in the email. Uh, but I was trying to determine which number was the hard number in terms of expenses, and I'm not, I'm not sure what that is. Can you direct me to the page? Uh, let me see if I can find it for you. <laughs> it is page 317. 317. Yes. Or at least I think it is, but that page comes before the title page. That's what it looks like to me. May not be, because uh, when you look at the specific of professional services line, which is uh, line four fifteen, the next page after that is blank. At least in my opinion, it is. Which, which, which is compensated by the page you provided, except uh, I think on the on the PDF you provided, Deputy Mayor, it doesn't yeah. have the total of expenses. Oh. Right. 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 Oh. But the counselor is Dave. Uh, but page three seventeen, 
that I have is the CDBG budget, which is not necessary. It, include, it would include some of the the list of the employees that the deputy mayor sent to you, but it would necessarily include all of them. So 317 is the CDBG budget. Yeah, I actually, you're correct. I just saw that. And, and what made me look at it, of course, is I saw, as you mentioned, some of the titles in the split pay uh, at the top of that list. Right. Yeah, obviously, you know, knowing knowing the total expenses is a big part of, of what we're trying to determine. I think Councilor Rudd's suggestion would right. be very helpful. Right. It makes it more manageable. Yeah, I'll update the sheet and 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 break that out. Yeah. Any of my colleagues have any questions uh, relative to SURA? Yes, to be no, explicit, there. the SURA stuff it doesn't get included in the main book, right? And then you send us this off sheet because it's a separate. Agency, like for instance, one position is the director of code enforcement. So that position shows up on codes, right? But then it gets paid via right. SURA. Yeah, Councilor Rudd, this is Mary Bossler. All of those positions on SURA are reported under the um, professional services line 541500 in each one of the departments. Right, that's the line I was looking for. The total, usually there is a total, a page with all of the explanations in the back under either professional services or special objects of expense. Correct me if I'm wrong, Councillor Hogan. It's all under um, the professional services. Right, and so the, page, the next page following that title page is blank. So I haven't seen um, anything providing a total expense for sure in the book. I don't know if anybody else has. We can, we can get it to you. We'll have to pull it out of each one of the departments. That's fine. And I I hope I didn't cause any confusion. I know to Councilor Bay's point, certain payroll is always a, a point of interest and concern. And so that's why I wanted to send you a separate sheet to just list everybody on the pay, on that SURA, paid under SURA, even though I know that you're gonna see those positions in varying locations in the budget. I just hope it didn't cause any confusion. No, no, actually it didn't. And, and quite honestly, had you not said that, we wouldn't have anything um, with due respect. Uh, you know, we can we can certainly have discussion about the various uh, levels of expense. Uh, again, as I mentioned, at the risk of being redundant, the total is, is mm -hmm. uh, a big part of it. And obviously, you know, it'd be kind of tough for us to go through every single uh, 415 line to calculate it ourselves. We can't do that at this point. Council Green, I believe you had something. Yeah, so uh, my question is about the staff that work in codes under SURA. So do we traditionally hire new code inspectors? Is it, I mean, do we hire them into SURA and then from there they work through the civil service to then work in NPD? How do we typically handle that? And then, because we know we're trying to hire at least two new ones this year, how would that work? Traditionally, Councilor, the code inspectors have been hired um, generally through um, posting a position, um, but what uh, the director of codes has been doing now is converting positions um, into civil service. This is inherited process. And so he has been, I, I can't remember exactly how many recently, it was upwards of maybe five that just recently took, um, took and uh, moved on into the civil service payment. Okay, so I mean, for the ones we're gonna try to hire this year, we probably try to follow that same process, right? Where, you know, if they meet the qualifications of the job, they're hired under SURA, and then from there, they try to qualify through civil service. That is the plan, yes, sir. David, could you run a, by the re, uh, sources of revenue again for SURA? Could you run that by? You had three sources you mentioned earlier. Well, the, the, well, there's three funds: the the revolving fund, which is the payroll, which is where we spend most of the discussion on. There's a development fund, which over the years has made is 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 made uh, loans to uh, various uh, agencies uh, to support the housing mission of of, C, of the community development NBD program. Very little revenue coming in from that. There's some loan interest. There's like a uh, so loans will be made out. People repay their loans, and it, it becomes a revolving fund, and well, not for payroll purposes, but for for loans. And then the third the third fund is the 
New York State Assistance Fund, which is a, a fund that's used to accumulate grants that have been primarily received by the state of New York. Now, we use that fund to, re to reflect any activity. For example, a few years ago, the county uh, issued a grant to the city for a variety of uh, purposes uh, related to uh, housing and the, and the west, uh, near west end, uh, near west side. So things like that are with that fund and those are not guaranteed sources of revenue. So they're, so none of the agency's revenues are guaranteed. The revenue is primarily any bank interest earnings, uh, and and the agency owns the lot on the corner of Salina, Washington, and we get uh, the agency gets about three thousand dollars from the from the city on that uh, on that rental. That's that's pretty much it. So could we have a breakdown of the revenue that goes into Sura? And so we can get some sort of um, feeling about how much of the Sura payroll is paid for by just, you know, city money and not those yeah, extra no, items. Right. Of <laughs> yes, and, and in fact, the um, you should have all received directly from the auditor the, the audit reports. In the uh, If not, we can make sure we get those to you. But the urban renewal audit, uh, clearly reflects the money that came in from the city and the money that came out. I mean, most of the agency is interacting with the city's general fund. There were some airport individuals on, but I think based on this list, they've all they've all transferred to the authority now. Uh, so basically, it's all general fund activity. So the revenues that are reported, and we're talking a couple million dollars. Um, that's really not from outside sources. That's basically the general fund reimbursing the revolving fund. So on the books, it's shown as revenue and expenses. So it's over $2 million, but we can get that. I could give you good numbers on that. Okay, thank you. See, this, sure. this has actually always been a, a part of the question for me. Um, and I, I'm going to try, try to use uh, kid gloves here, guys, so give my apologies early. Understanding the nature of SURA's intent with most of the money being in the resolving, revolving fund for payroll, I would expect that not much is going towards housing. How much are we spending from the development fund on housing? Uh, have to, I, I, don't, I, I don't work with that on a regular basis. I'd have to follow up with NBD on that. We have to get is back NBD to on, Is NBD on the line? Because they yeah. should... So yeah, Mike would have been on the line except for his right, right. situation. But I, I could speak to part of this is also how Sura can play a role in lot redevelopment, et cetera, for infill counselor. Um Sura, Sura can play a role in that kind of housing development effort that we're looking at going forward. Yeah, I, I understand and appreciate that, Madam Deputy. It's just, you know, just this just for our, our purposes and maybe this. You know, I have, I'm going to make a little bit of an adjustment with a request uh, with the blessing of the council president. Uh, my next committee meeting is not till the 20th, I believe. Uh, and if, if we could by then at the total number of expense for SOAR, but also some kind of breakdown on percentages, what percentage of it is going is in the revolving fund, what percentage actually goes uh, for housing. Uh, and the last question relative to that is also for the New York state grants that come in, how is that spent? Where does that go? I mean, is that going towards salary as well, or is that going toward housing? Right. Well, yeah, we could get that for you, but I will tell you, none of that, any of those grants are, are um, would, would be, any disbursements would need to be re consistent with the grant agreement. And I've never seen those go out for salaries. Um, okay. Council, they are very much project specific. Okay, I appreciate that. And, and, you know, I mean, not for nothing, I think, uh, again, this has been uh, over administration, so it's not relative to this one. This is this has been an old topic. Uh, so, you know, that's why I said I was kind of using kid gloves. I don't want anybody to feel like they're being chastised or put on the spot. But these are questions that have always been asked and the previous administration apparently struggled to answer them as well. Um, and so hopefully you guys can provide us some concern. I mean, some some uh, explanation. One of the things in terms of the optics, to be frank, is oftentimes Sura appears to be the 
administration's own member item. And that's, that's part of the concern where, you know, money can be spent, you know, uh, oftentimes uh, at the whim of, uh, you know, the administration, whatever projects they have, and it doesn't have, you know, it has the appearance of not having as much oversight. We know that's not 100% the case, uh, but it's like having your own pork barrel. And that's that's been part of the concern in the past. And so I can understand why the council has always been as fiduciary agent concerned about how it's being used and whether it's being used for what it was intended for. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Yep. Any other uh, questions from a colleague? I would, it might be in the same drum, but I think it's saying it a slightly different way, but so how much of Sura is non payroll? I sort of understand Sura to be almost, I would think of it as hundred percent payroll. But is there, are there non-payroll expenses? So if there are, how much, what are they? That would be helpful. That, that, is, that is the same question, uh, Council Rudd. Yeah. <laughs> and you, like, I understand it to be all payroll at the moment, but is, it, is that not true? John, John is- No, there, uh, as uh, Dave re reflected on the, the three different funds and uh, the two Can separate- you yourself? Pardon? Announce yourself just so people know who you are. Yeah. Oh, I, sorry, John Vavanese from MBD. Um, the uh, state fund, the development fund are distinct and never commingle with the evolving fund, um, as the commissioner defined. And uh, as far as activity, the development fund doesn't get a lot. There's only a couple of loans. As he said, there's only a, a minimal amount of income currently. It comes from that about 850 a month in uh, loan payments from two current loans. The most recent uh, neighborhood activity, I guess I would call it, that the development fund supported was uh, it now holds a $150,000 mortgage for the price right store. From that, the assistance fund, most recently, as far as neighborhood, again, the commissioner mentioned the uh, West End, Skunk City, Harbor Brook area, a good deal of money came from county grants and went into that. And uh, the absolute most recent activity, uh, this was actually split between the assistance, the state assistance fund and the development fund uh, was for the City Park, uh, I forget the name of it offhand, uh, the one in front of Lincoln Center. Perseverance. Uh, so yeah, we, uh, so far, the last few months, we spent about 243,000 on that, which was split evenly between those two funds. But again, none of that goes in or out of the revolving fund, which is strictly the payroll. I think, you know, um, and, and maybe, maybe one of the, um, maybe the president or one of the for, former counselors, um, or, uh, Councilor Hogan, if I thought, well, Councilor Hogan was asking, uh, a, a very interesting question and it's kind of my question as well, uh, because, you know, we, we, we pay through, uh, sort of staff and, and the like, which is reimbursed through the general fund. And I thought his question was very important. Well, where is the money coming from that we're paying with? You know, we, you know, and, and I think that's ultimately well, what he was asking. If I'm not mistaken, Councilor Hogan. Yes. Uh, oh, this is Dave. This is Dave Delecky like again. Uh, uh, Councilor, sorry, I didn't catch that. The um, many years ago, the Common Council approved what we refer to as a capitalization amount. I believe it's close to four hundred thousand dollars. So the the Common Council authorized the general fund to, to advance 400,000 to the Urban Renewal Agency for revolving fund payroll. That's how the payroll is advanced. Uh, over the uh, time period, what happens is uh, the payroll office here will invoice the departments who then reimburse the fund 
the revolving fund, and that's how the cash is returned and then it's spent and dispersed further to meet the next next payroll period. So that's that's the concept. Initially, it was it was a it was funds from the general fund. So if you look at the at the at the at the books of the agency, there's a a, a receivable on the urban renewal agency. It's going to be a payable due to the city, and on the city's books, we have a receivable due from Sura for that four hundred thousand. And so that's how it's funded initially. And then uh, over time, we just you know we basically are are invoicing these departments. They do checks through the PeopleSoft system. It gets charged against the budgets that you are looking at through the budget process, and and a check is cut and and then. Uh, deposited with the agency to replenish the cash. Okay, I appreciate that. Commissioner. We have a minute before the next uh, hearing of uh, Council Rudd, uh, so I guess we're not signing off. But let me let me just state this uh, while this last minute runs out, um, and that's if there's no more other questions or concerns. Uh, you know, it, I, I didn't always agree with former Council Kathleen Joy, you know, and sometimes me and <laughs> the current auditor, former Council, used to have our own uh, this disagreements as well, but it, it, it is, it, it seems a bit strange. I just have to say it, it seems like a bit of a three card money on its surface. That we, you know, if, if, if the council a while ago approved to pay these salaries, then the question would be, why not just pay out of the general fund? Why sit it over on the side? And, and it leaves people to speculate for why uh, whoever created it, created it because it, it has less, uh, scrutiny, to be quite frank. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to kind of end that there and we can finish the conversation at, at another time. But just to kind of uh, recap, if we can get a total expense out of line 415, and also to my Council of Rights question, the percentages as they're spent, what percentages for salary, what percentage goes toward uh, housing, and, and of course, you guys explained the New York State uh, fund. Uh, I don't know if there's anything else before we turn it over to Councilor Rudd. Councilor, I wonder if I could just weigh in. I, you know, I, I agree totally with what Councilor Bay says, and I think we're sort of damned by the history of this program uh, being a relic of a time where there wasn't much uh, fiduciary uh, oversight. And, uh, you know, I, I go back a long ways. Uh, I'm probably a relic of a previous time, too, you could say, but. Um, I remember, you know, when this the sir, uh, payrolls filled with people that like weren't exactly suited for any kind of positions at all. And I think this is just, you know, I, and it just as it is, it's just the it's the way it's presented. It, and uh, I think you presented well. And I look through that list. And there's a lot of people that uh, I understand how operations work. And there's a lot of people that are sort of awaiting to take civil service positions. And sometimes SUR is now used for, uh, to address needs that maybe, uh, uh, you know, and positions that uh, deal with city problems where maybe we don't have a civil service position ready for them. And we haven't got them, uh, haven't got them uh, codified by the co county yet. So that's all I got to say. That's true as well. Appreciate it, Council. All right, so if there's uh, nothing else on that, no. Rod, it's your show. I right, would start the hearing for the Office of Management and Budget. Um, we're going to want to walk through the basics. Um, good morning, counselors. Um, the basics of the Office of Management um, and Budget are, we have a, a roster of, of six individuals uh, two of those individuals are unfunded, meaning there's no money behind them. So we basically have the same number of positions as we did in fiscal year 20. Um, our, the numbers in terms of uh, salaries and contractual and other expenses, the total went up by 3%, and that is the difference in our 5415 professional services line. Uh, last year, we had a part-time uh, secretarial assistant who went to full time, and we now share that position 60%, uh, 40% with the Department of Innovation. So um, she is on a thorough line uh, because of the 
amount of secretaries at the county civil service, the city reached that maximum and she needs to be on a survey line. Um, our salary line is uh, uh, down slightly because we had a budget analyst three last year who resigned from the city and we replaced that with a budget analyst one. So overall we are up 3%, um, same number of employees, just different different grades, grades of budget analysts. Do you have any questions? We're a small department of people and people and paper, I call it, with office copiers <laughs> and copy paper. <laughs> and we produce a lot of paper. Also, if you, uh, if you, before you have any questions, all the hard copies of your budget are up in the council office. So when you stop by, they are up there. I don't totally, I couldn't repeat the thing you said about the, um, whatever, contracting line, professional service line. So the one person's on Sura, they're shared between they're, you she, and she, the I team. Right, you pay, was, you pay what percent? Half? 40? 60? We pay 60. She's a, she was part time last year, no benefits. She's full time this year with benefits, and she shared. 60-40, the budget department has her 60% of the time, the innovation department has her 40% of the time. How does it work? She Is the time like two days in one office and three days in the other, or is it just overall all she the works, time? Uh, no, she works in my office uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, and she works for the API team on Mondays and Fridays. And it's, work, it's worked out well for both, of, instead of both of us having a full-time secretary, this has worked out, I think, really well. So the other piece of this is the purchase department. Um, and last year we had a number of the um, titles for the financial operations division in this division. Uh, so we had a budget last year of about $323,000. All of those individuals have been moved to the uh, Financial Operations Bureau uh, under Treasury, which Brad explained about an hour ago. So I have one person left in this department, and she handles all the, the contracts, the RFPs, all the um, insurance that uh, contractors have to have with the city, um, and and it's just one person doing the work full time. Any questions? I don't have any. Anybody else? No questions. All right. Well, with that, I guess we can shut it down for the day. This is the last one. Thank you, everyone, for joining. See you early next week. Thanks, sir, Counselor. Thanks, Counselors. Yeah. Thanks, everybody. Have a good day. All right, bye.